Today, I'm going to be installing a Celeron 500 CPU into one of my vintage computers. It currently has a Celeron 433 in it, but I decided to upgrade it to a Celeron 500 simply because I had one lying around that happened to be untested and needed to be tested. So I thought this would be a good way to test it out and have some fun. Let's get started. First of all, I need to take the back cover of my case off, so that way I can access the inside. I had to pull apart the whole computer pretty much just to access the CPU. This case is somewhat compact, which means that it's not necessarily easy to just access the CPU when you take the cover off. When I went to unplug my IDE cable connected to my CD-ROM, it completely broke. So I'm going to have to install a new one of those now. Luckily, I have a whole bag full of them, so not much of a loss, but still annoying. Anyway, I was nearly ready to take the motherboard tray out of the computer now. Just had to take out the video card and the sound card. Now, I just need to unscrew the motherboard tray itself and then we can take it out. And the big moment. Now, we can take out the motherboard tray to reveal our CPU. Now it's time to take our CPU cooler off the CPU so we can access it. I had no trouble taking the clip holding down the CPU cooler off, but man, it was really stuck on there. The 20 year old thermal paste must not really be doing its job that well, because this thing was stuck. And also, it was reading a temperature of 45 degrees in the BIOS. So, yeah. When I finally got the CPU cooler off, I was shocked. That's not thermal paste at all. Well, it once was, but not anymore. So I took the CPU out as well. And then I managed to get all that thermal paste remain off the CPU cooler with nothing but my fingernail because everything else I tried was just not gonna work. It was stuck on there good. Eventually, however, I did get 99% of the thermal paste remains off. So now we could finally go ahead and install our Celeron 500. After installing the CPU in its rightful socket, it was now time to put on our thermal paste, which in this case is Arctic Silver 5. It feels kind of weird to put such a good modern thermal compound on an old CPU, but it'll give it very good cooling for sure. So that's always a bonus. And now it's time to reinstall our CPU cooler. Once it's on there, I'll move it around a little bit to make sure our thermal paste is evenly spread across the newly installed Celeron 500. I completely put the computer back together next. Now, it was time to test it. That beep doesn't sound good at all. After a bit of inconclusive research, I determined that I might need to change around the CPU dip switches to make sure I'm running the right settings for the processor. After doing that, let's see what happens. Yet again, we have the same problem and the same beep. Well, I think it was good that I did change those settings because they are correct now. We still haven't solved our problem. Just out of curiosity, I tried removing all but one RAM stick just to see what would happen. Let's try it again. 
with all but one ram stick removed. I don't hear any beeps. That's a good sign. Wow, would you look at that? It's working. And our untested CPU is working, reading a 500 megahertz clock speed, which is exactly correct. Perfect. It's completely perfect. I tested it further and it boots into Windows 98 and runs just fine. So this has been a successful upgrade. After even more testing, I've determined that it's this stick of PC133 memory which is bad. What I discovered and came to the conclusion of is that my motherboard does not support PC133 RAM. Oddly enough, I can recall it working with this RAM, but maybe it's just my CPU? I don't know, but either way, that RAM doesn't work on this system. So that's that mystery solved. Well, we successfully upgraded from a 433 MHz Celeron all the way up to a 500 MHz one. The reason I didn't put a Pentium 3 in this motherboard is because it just doesn't support it. It only The chipset on it only supports Pentium 2 and Celeron CPUs. And since it's socket 370, there isn't a Pentium 2 CPU for it, so Celeron is our only option. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.